Mr. President, Timothy Kirchhoff, European Conservatives and Reformists. Uh, President, uh, talking of programmes, let me remind you of the lesson of the 1992 programme, and that's for the Commission to achieve results, it needs to set one priority and focus on one policy at a time. And the effort to establish a single market was a worthwhile objective which could be easily understood by all those involved and, crucially, by the public. But since then, all too frequently, we've seen the Commission launching initiative after initiative regardless of whether Europe was the appropriate forum or whether it could really deliver tangible benefits in the futile hope they'd make it popular. That approach was wrong and it failed. We therefore welcome the new direction which has been developed by President Barroso. The European economy is still in deep crisis and only consistent action will change that situation. I do not simply refer to the immediate crisis triggered by the failure of the banking system or the extra pressures now provided by transport emergencies, I mean the underlying crisis which has seen the European economy left behind by more competitive and innovative economies across the Atlantic and in Asia. We therefore strongly support the centrepiece initiative of this Commission, the 2020 Strategy. Whilst we believe there are details to be added and changes that should be made, the broad thrust of the policy is correct. Europe needs a strategy for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth which can deliver high levels of employment, productivity and social inclusion. Hear, hear. This must be the overriding priority defining the Commission. Our future economic prosperity and all the benefits it can generate depend on successful businesses and entrepreneurs. They're the ones who create wealth and sustainable productive job, and that is the best anti-poverty policy yet invented. The Commission must be their ally, not their adversary. We therefore welcome the commitments to relaunch the single market, extending it further, to emphasize smart regulation, to ensure the implementation of rules is consistent and fair throughout the Union, to reduce substantially the administrative burden and cut down on red tape, and to address bottlenecks, to share best practice in training, and to modernise the labour market and to reduce barriers to trade. In taking a lead in developing a vibrant, dynamic European economy, President Barroso will have our support. We don't, of course, like everything. We're concerned that some measures might result in infringements of the rights and responsibilities of member states, such as the concept of a citizen's Europe, some aspects of the Stockholm programme. Uh, we're encouraged by the prospect of reform in the common agriculture and fisheries policies, but concerned this may result in more bureaucracy rather than a fair solution for our farmers and fishermen. And finally, we do not agree that common initiatives undertaken by member states in the field of foreign affairs should be totally taken over by the Commission rather than left to the Council. The ECR was founded to uphold the principle of subsidiarity. We want a Europe that focuses on its proper key tasks and delivers real benefits. And we're hopeful, hopeful that President Barroso and his Commission, all of whom are here, one for each of us today, seize the opportunity evident in much of the work programme presented to nurture a Europe playing its part in shaping an economic recovery and can offer a foundation for our long-term prosperity in the difficult and challenging years ahead. Thank you, President. Thank you, President. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Kirkup, for your remarks.